And our team is at the Culloden County Courthouse right now where we are getting more information and getting updates about the trial that started today again. Now the defense called more witnesses on day 21 of the Alec Murdoch double murder trial. He's charged with killing his wife Maggie and their youngest son Paul in June 2021. And for the first time since that trial started, the jury got a chance to hear from Buster Murdoch, Alex's oldest son. Our team at the Culloden County Courthouse in Walterboro, Blair Sable has been following this story since the very beginning. Cameron Bopp has a seat inside of the courtroom with the full view of the jury, judge and defendant. But we start with Raphael James. Raph, were there any surprises from Buster's testimony this morning? No, and not really. As a matter of fact, he answered questions from the defense attorney Jim Griffin rather confidently and matter of factly. When it came time for the state to cross examine him, it didn't really feel as if they went at him as hard as they could. Not really much challenge there. However, when it came to the defense, it seemed that they were using Buster's answers as strategy to refute some of the things that the prosecution had established earlier on last week. We go now to Blair Sable. Blair, Buster did have an opportunity, though, to weigh in on one of the most controversial aspects of this trial so far. Yeah, Roth defense attorney Jim Griffin, he brought us all the way back to that first interview between Alec Murdoch and law enforcement. And there was a lot of back and forth on whether or not he said they did them so bad or I did them so bad. His only surviving son believes he said they did them so bad. Buster Murdoch told a jury that he heard his father say that very same statement many times that night, June 7, 2021. He and his girlfriend joined the many family and friends at Moselle who had flocked to Alex's side shortly after the murders. An investigator who was in the car at the time of that interview testified that he clearly heard Murdoch say, I did them so bad, taking it as a confession of some sort of crime. The defense also used the timeline that the state submitted as evidence last week to go through the several calls between the Murdoch family throughout that day. Well, Buster says he doesn't remember what any of them were really about, except for the 910 phone call he got from his dad. Um, and he was just letting me know that he was going out to Alameda to check on them. Okay. And was this a unusual conversation you had with him? No, sir. What was his demeanor in the conversation? Normal. Had, had it changed from any of the other times you talked to him earlier in the day on the 7th? No, sir. Well, Buster testified that cell phone service was poor at Moselle and it wasn't strange for Alec or Paul to not have their phones on them while they were on the property. And the state has provided previous testimony that both were constantly on their devices. Buster also talked about the fact that he worked with his father to put out a release for a $100,000 reward to find whoever was responsible for the murders. But he said he didn't fear for his life and he didn't ask for any extra security uh, following the murders of his mother and brother. Roth. Thank you, Blair. Now, Blair and I watched the trial through a feed. Cameron Bob is actually in the courtroom. And Cameron, you were there today as Buster testified. Uh, can you give us some kind of feeling as to what that was like with the emotion between Buster, Alec Murdoch, and the family? Well, Ralph, Buster has been pretty hard to read through the entirety of this trial. You know, we've seen him doodling in his notepad a few times, uh, maybe tearing up just once or twice during testimony in previous weeks. And really, today was no different. You know, he took the stand. He was uncomfortable, fidgeting with the microphone, uh, rubbing his face. Uh, but as we just heard from Blair, not much inflection in his voice. There really wasn't any emotion behind what he was saying today. Now, this comes as the defense was asking Buster questions about memories at the family's properties, once more trying to paint the Murdoch family as very close, just like the phone calls Blair told us about. Now, defense attorney Jim Griffin asked Buster about his favorite things to do as a kid, including hunting and sports, his dad even coaching one of his little league teams at one point. And then once again, the defense pulling up a video taken around Murdoch's birthday just weeks before the murders, showing once again how close the family is. However, when he was asked about it, Buster couldn't actually remember his dad's birthday. Group of friends, when's your dad's birthday? Do you know the exact date? Uh, it's not a test. You just say you don't know if you don't know. 
No, I don't, I don't know okay. the exact date. It's around uh, Memorial Day? That's right. Okay. 27th, maybe. Several members of Murdoch's family and several people in the gallery laughed after that exchange. Not Buster, though. And interesting to note, Alec Murdoch had more family sitting behind him today than we have seen in the past several weeks. I'm talking about all of his siblings, several nieces, and of course Buster and his girlfriend. And Roth, it was it was a packed courtroom today. I, I counted about 13 people sitting behind Murdoch uh, and then behind them completely full, still ga uh, garnering a lot of public interest. Roth, back to you. Now, every day, more and more people show up at the Collin County Courthouse trying to get in, and they're here pretty early in the morning. Those that don't get in behind me are waiting in that line as early as 1030 with the hopes that they can get in on the afternoon sessions. Now, before I go, I want to bring to your attention something else that happened in court. It regards a tweet from defense attorney Jim Griffin. Judge Clifton Newman said he saw this morning a tweet come in on his Twitter feed and he gave Griffin an earful. The article that uh, Griffin tweeted was critical of the state's witnesses and the investigation into the Murdoch case. The judge asked, was this part of his defense strategy, trying the case on Twitter? Griffin states he merely retweeted the article. Judge Newman was not amused. After a while, Griffin said he only retweeted the article, but added and told the judge he will make sure that he doesn't retweet or tweet for the duration of this trial. At the Colleton County Courthouse, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, Roth, thank you. Now, our live team coverage will continue on Live 5 News right here at 6. And if you can't watch our coverage in real time, our team of digital journalists has got you covered. They will be providing you with updates each and every day of the trial. To find and follow that page, go to live5news.com and click on the live blog.